Hey bag lady, I'm Sarah Lawson from Soul Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Ask Sarah, my weekly Q&A chat. Hey, so I'm really excited for tonight. I saw all my bag ladies jumping in on the chats on Facebook and YouTube ahead of time. My husband Danny is at the controls and he saw in particular Pamela that was the first one in on YouTube. So hey Pamela, Pamela is always watching on YouTube. There she is on the screen, Pamela. <laughs> Thanks for joining me every week, sometimes twice a week. Um, so hey to all my bag ladies. Um, on the docket for tonight, I'm going to be showing my free video for my Oslo craft bag. It's a free pattern to newsletter subscribers. If you're not already a, a subscriber, just check the link in the description and you can get signed up and get your free pattern. So hey, I see Caroline jumping in. Hey, Caroline. Anne, hi Anne. Um, all right, so let me show you some details about the Oslo craft bag. Fair warning, the video is one hour, 40 minutes long. I don't expect you to stay, stick around for the whole video, although you are certainly welcome to. About 40 minutes into the video, my husband Danny's gonna jump on and we're gonna take some questions. So if you have any sewing related questions or questions about any of my patterns or anything, leave your question in the comments and we'll get to as many questions as we can um, about 40 minutes into the video and then we'll play the rest of the video at the end. All right, so let me show you the Oslo craft bag, some of the details. So let me flip to the back first. So on the back it fits a, this is my 12 inch by six inch ruler. So that's my quilting ruler. It's got plenty of pockets. So it's got these pockets on the side. Um, I used a pearl snap for the closure on the pockets. So between these two bags, I used two different methods for installing the pearl snap. So this bag has a cam snap, which is kind of like a plastic snap. And I have a really big tabletop press that installs this snap. And on this bag, I use the snap setter tool. This is a, sort of a metal snap with a metal finish. And this tool, you need to hammer the top of the tool to get the snap installed. So um, the main difference is the installation and the price. So my cam press costs me I think it was about $100, and that's a big tabletop press. The snap setter tool was about $9, so very inexpensive. If you're looking for that snap setter tool, I have a link in the description for the snap, um, replacement snaps, and also um, snap setter makes a hammer with different sizes of screws inside the handle, which is pretty cool. There's three pockets on the front. Um, as you can see, I've got pens and rotary cutter and other things in the front and then I've got um, yarn and some fabric on the inside. So it fits a lot of stuff, great for taking with you to um, sewing retreat, if you're meeting someone maybe to do some knitting. I've also seen some ladies make this bag for a diaper tote for the changing station for a baby shower gift. So it's great for a lot of different purposes. Um, and here's another bag that I made. I use like a vinyl faux leather on the handles for this one. Um, so lots of options for getting this bag finished. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I also wanted to tell you that we're going to be posting another video on March 1st. So if you haven't heard about it already or maybe you haven't joined up yet, um, our Cork Club will be shipping um, tomorrow. We're going to start shipping the packages tomorrow. Cork Club is a six-month club. Each month you get 10 completely different pieces of cork. Um, and a swatch card so that you can snip a little piece of the cork and save it for a reference um, for sort of like a color guide to what the cork looks like in person. In addition to the 10 pieces of cork, um, we have a free bonus video each month, so six videos in total. And I just finished the project for the first video today, so I wanted to share it with you. It's for an eyeglass case. I put a pearl snap on it, but you could also use some Velcro as the closure. And surprisingly, this only takes one nine inch by seven inch piece of cork, which is what is included in the packet. So a little cork goes a long way. I made this project in about 10 minutes because cork can be left raw. Um, this is a raw edge project and I've got my, my eyeglasses inside. So this would be a great project to make a lot of in a hurry for maybe a craft fair or a party, like a party guest favor type of thing. So anyway, um, we'll be posting this Core Club project on March 1st, and we'll start shipping the Core Club packages out tomorrow. They're all ready to go. We just got to get the labels and get them uh, to the mailman. So anyway, without further ado, um, here's the Oslo craft bag video. Again, the video is one hour, 40 minutes long. The video is available anytime after the live broadcast, either on Facebook, YouTube, or on my website. 
and stick around in about 40 minutes. My husband Danny will be joining joining me and we'll be taking some questions. So enjoy the video. Hey bag lady, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make my Oslo Craft Bag sewing pattern. The Oslo Craft Bag is a free pattern available to newsletter subscribers. If you're not already a subscriber, just check the link in the description. You can join my newsletter, get your free pattern, and then get to work on the video. The Oslo Craft Bag is the perfect tote for art supplies, sewing supplies, and it's also a great caddy for a baby's changing table. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, before you begin cutting out the fabric and interfacing, you'll need to print out the PDF pattern and the last page has all of the templates on it. So when opening a PDF pattern, you always want to open Adobe Reader. It's a free program to download if you don't already have it on your device. And you want to print at actual size. So you don't want to print at scaling or fit to page. It has to be actual size. And you also want to measure either the one inch square or the four centimeter square to make sure that they measure exactly as they should. So mine measures out fine. So I'm going to begin cutting out my pattern pieces. When it comes to this dart, you just want to cut around it. We're not cutting the dart out for now. Okay, so when cutting the pattern pieces out, you want to cut to the outside of the black line, just like this. Okay, so after you've got all of your fabric and interfacing cut out, let me show you how to attach the fabric to interfacing. So I've got one of my lining pieces cut out right here. And here's a piece of the ShapeFlex interfacing. And one side of the interfacing feels bumpy to your fingertips. That's the side with the adhesive, and that's the side that will go against the wrong side of the fabric. I have my iron set at the cotton setting, and I'm just going to glide my iron over each area of the fabric for a few seconds. And I usually recommend using a pressing cloth. The pressing cloth will protect your iron from accidentally getting adhesive on it. For my videos, I usually don't use a pressing cloth just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so once you've ironed the interfacing to the fabric, you want to just try to peel back a corner of the interfacing using your fingernail. So if you can peel back the interfacing easily, then that means you need to fuse it a little bit longer. But if it's nice and tight, um, then you're ready to move on. So you repeat the same process for all of the pieces that require the ShapeFlex interfacing. Okay, so I've got one of my exterior side panels cut out and the foam interfacing. So let me show you how to attach that. So some foam, foam interfacings are fusible, so you would attach those in a similar manner to how you did with the ShapeFlex. I like using By Annie Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in interfacing. And so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to machine base this around the outer edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to use some wonder clips to hold the fabric in place. And whenever I'm machine basting anything, I always like to use a longer stitch length to make the process go by a bit quicker. So I'm going to use a four millimeter stitch length. And you'll repeat the same process with all of the pieces that require the ShapeFlex interfacing and I highly recommend to use post-it notes or a scrap of paper to label all of your cut pieces after they've been attached to the interfacing just because there's a lot of similar shaped rectangles around the same size and I think the post-it notes will save some headaches later on. Okay for this first section in the pattern we're going to be assembling the lining. So to start take out your pocket pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. We're going to stitch the seven inch edge. So this is the seven inch edge right here. So I'm going to put some wonder clips on it. And we're going to sew that seven inch edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And if you had your stitch length set to three millimeters, or excuse me, four millimeters for attaching the foam interfacing, set it back to your usual and mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, hey, going forward, make sure you backstitch at start and stop of all of the seams.
Okay, now we're going to press this wrong sides together. First, I always like to press the seam open. It just helps get a nice seam on the top edge of that pocket piece. Okay, now I'm going to press the, those wrong sides together. I'm just using my fingers to kind of roll out the seam. Okay, we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch this top edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and for any top stitching, I like to use a length and stitch length, so I have mine set to three millimeters. pull out one of your lining side panels and we're going to place that completed pocket piece directly on top. You want the sides and the bottom to be aligned. I'm going to put some wonder clips to hold the pocket in place and we're going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, you'll repeat the same process to attach the remaining pocket pieces to the second lining side panel. Okay, now pull out both of your divider pieces and these are squares that measure 7 inches by 7 inches. We're going to place those right sides together. If your fabric is directional, um, we're going to be stitching the top edge, so just make sure your fabric design is oriented the same way for both pieces. Okay, I'm going to place some wonder clips on the top edge. And we're going to be stitching that top edge only using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, if you had your stitch length set to three millimeters for top stitching on that pocket, go ahead and set it back to your usual, and mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, now let's press this the same way that we did with the pocket. So again, the seams ironed open. And then press the fabrics wrong sides together. Okay, so just as we did with the pocket, we're going to top stitch this top edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and make sure you lengthen your stitch length to three millimeters. Okay, now take out one lining main panel piece, and the lining main panel is a rectangle that measures 8 inches at the top and then 8.5 inches on the side. So we're going to place that completed divider piece so that the top stitch portion is at the top, and we're going to align the right hand edges. So the sides and the bottom should be aligned. So let's go ahead and put some wonder clips on this edge. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a mark that is a half inch below, a half inch up from the bottom edge. So I'm just going to draw my mark right here. So we're going to sew this seam right here using a half inch seam allowance. When you reach the line that you drew, you're going to stop sewing. So make sure you backstitch and this is where we'll be stopping sewing, right here by this line. Okay, switch your stitch length back to two and a half millimeters and just as a reminder, this is a half inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to add a second lining main panel piece, and it's going to go right sides together with these fabrics over here. Okay, again, I'm going to add some wonder clips. And we're going to sew this seam using a half inch seam allowance, and we're get, again, we're going to stop a half inch before we reach the bottom edge. So you can either mark your fabric as you did before, or you can flip to the wrong side of the exterior 
I'm sorry, the lining from the previous step and sew directly on top of the previous stitching. Either way will work. Okay, so here's the half inch line. We're going to start sewing over here, half inch down from this edge. This time we're going to sew all the way down to the opposite end. So here's that divider pocket on the inside. We need to stitch this closed at the top. Okay, now let's press that seam open. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Here's that divider. And then again, we stopped sewing a half inch before the bottom, so you should have a little bit of an opening down here. Okay, now go ahead and push those lining main panels out of the way and we're going to repeat that same process to sew the remaining side edge of the divider to the last two lining main panels. So let me pull out one of the lining main panels. So this is the third one. You want the eight inch edge to be at the top. So this is the eight and a half inch edge. And I'm just going to slide the divider right on top. Again, the sides and the bottom need to be aligned. So I'm going to pin this in place. And again, I'm going to take my fabric pen and I'm going to draw a line that is a half inch up from the bottom edge and I'm going to make a mark. So we're going to sew this again using a half inch seam allowance from the top of the divider down and we're going to stop at the line that we drew. Okay, now let's add the last lining main panel. So we're going to flip it so it's right sides together with that divider. And then I'm going to pin the side edges in place. Okay, again, here's a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. And we're going to sew from the very top down to the line. Okay, and this is a half inch seam allowance. Again, we're going to press that seam open. Okay, now it's time to add the lining side panels. So let me just show you what we've accomplished so far. So this is the lining of the bag and here's the divider down the center of the bag. So we need to add the lining sides which will be situated here. So we'll start on this end. We'll add one edge at a time. So pull out one of your lining side panels and that has the pocket already sewn in. So I'm going to place this right sides together with this one lining main panel. So there's just the one layer of fabric right here and here's the lining side panel. Okay, again I'm going to draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. I'm going to sew using a half inch seam allowance from the top edge down to the line that I drew. Okay, now I'm going to press the seam open that I just sewed. Okay, and now I'm going to attach the remaining side edge of that lining side panel to the lining main panel. So I'm just going to bring this over. Let me pin it first and then I'll show you what it looks like if I stand the fabric up. Okay, again I'm going to take my fabric marker and draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom. 
And we're going to be sewing this using a half inch seam allowance from the top to the line. So here I've got this pinned in place and let me show you what that will look like. So here's the divider, there's the pocket, and here's that side panel. So we're going to be attaching the other side panel on the opposite end. Okay, so let's take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, so press that seam open that we just sewed. Okay, and then we're going to add the remaining lining side panel to the last edges of these two lining main panels. So here's my lining side panel with the pocket. You want to make sure the bottom edge of the pocket is on the same edge as the bottom edge of this divider. I'm going to flip the fabric so that they're right sides together and just make sure you're sewing only one through one layer of the lining main panel and here's the lining side panel. So I'm going to pin the side edges in place and again we're going to be using a half inch seam allowance and let me take my fabric marker, I'm going to draw that line again half inch up from the bottom edge. So I'm going to sew from the top to the line. Okay, now let's press that seam open. Okay, well now we're going to attach um, the remaining side edge of the side panel to the last lining main panel. So let me pin this and then I'll show you what it looks like from a top view. Okay, and again I'm going to take my fabric marker and draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. Okay, when we go to sew this, we're going to sew from the top down to the line using half inch seam allowance and when it's completed it's going to look like this. Okay, now go ahead and pull out one of the lining bottom panels and we're going to attach that to the lining piece that we assembled with the divider. So go ahead and flip so that the pockets, the bottom raw edge of the pockets are facing up and you want to see all the edges where we left the bottom half inches unsewn. Okay, so I'm going to orient this lining bottom panel so that it's right sides together with these fabrics. So we're going to start pinning one edge at a time and the reason that we left this half inch unpinned is so we can line up the quarters, corners with the bottom panel. So I'm going to line up this quarter edge over here with the corner edge of the lining bottom panel and I'm going to pin those right sides together. Same thing on the opposite corner, line up the corners first and then you can pin to the middle. Okay, now I'm going to pin all the way around one edge at a time. So again, make sure you line up the corners first. and then let's keep pinning. Okay, we're going to sew these using a half inch seam allowance and we're only going to sew one edge at a time. So we'll sew this edge, break the stitching, take it off the machine, sew this edge and so on. You're going to start and stop a half inch away from each end so you can use the stitching that's already here from when we attached 
um, the sides and the main panels. So we're going to start stitching over here using half inch seam allowance, stop stitching when we reach the stitching line. Take it off the machine, set it back up, start stitching at this stitching line, stop stitching over here and so on, working the way all the way around until all four of the edges have been sewn. And I'm just using my fingers to get on the inside and spread the fabrics apart so that I'm only sewing on two layers of fabric at a, not, at a time and not sewing over anything else that's gotten bunched in the corners. Okay, so this is what the wrong side of the lining bottom panel looks like after it's sewn in place. As you can see, I kept these fabrics spread apart in the middle. Now when we go to sew the last lining main panel, we'll sew all those together so they'll be um, a tight unit. So let's pin that last lining bottom panel in place. So here it is, and I'm just going to flip it so that the fabrics are right sides together. And same as before, I'm just going to pin all four sides. Okay, so I'm going to pin through, like I said, all of the layers that are connected to the divider. We're going to sew through all of those layers. Okay, we're going to sew using a half inch seam allowance as we did before. And same thing. You're going to start stitching at the stitching line and you're going to stop stitching when you reach the opposing stitching line and we're going to sew one edge at a time. Okay, so this is what the completed lining should look like. And the last step to finishing this is trimming all of the seams down to a quarter, uh, quarter of an inch, so about in half. And there's no need to measure that, just eyeball it and it's fine. 
The reason that we're trimming down the seams is to reduce the bulk in the finished bag. And I get this question a lot too because we only sewed in a half inch and stopped a half inch away from the end. I get the question, well, won't there be a hole? Because the stitching lines are connected, as you can see from the back, the stitching line meets the other one. There won't be a visible hole or opening in the bottom of your finished bag. This is just a method that I like to use so that those corners aren't bulky. If you sewed off the end, each time you would have like a big area of bunched up fabric in your corners. So this makes the corners look really neat. Okay, go ahead and put the lining to the side for now. And go ahead and pull out your side pocket fabric piece as well as the pattern piece. So I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the fabric. And I went ahead and cut a slit through um, where that marking was for the pleat placement. And I'm going to use my fabric marker and mark both halves on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm just going to draw a line by sticking my pen through that slit that I cut and I'll transfer that to the other half as well. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna fold the fabric so that it's right sides together. Both of those lines should be on top of each other. I'm just gonna put a wonder clip over here in place and I'm gonna stitch directly on top of the line and make sure you especially backstitch when you reach the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and press that pleat open. So to do that, just lay the fabric right side facing down and take your finger and sort of push that pleat down so that equal amounts of fabric are showing on either end of the stitching line. So I'm going to take my iron and just press that down. Okay, now I'm going to flip so the right side of the fabric is facing up and I'm going to take my ruler and measure down one inch and a quarter from the top edge and just draw a little line. And I'm using a clover chaco since this will be showing on the right side of the fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna top stitch this pleat down. So I'm gonna sew an eighth of an inch to the outside of the stitching line from the pleat. So I'm gonna sew over here down to the line and I'm gonna sew the other half as well. So over here, an eighth of an inch away down to the line. Okay, so this is what it should look like from the back, and as you can see, that pleat is sewn down. You'll repeat this same process with all four of these side pocket pieces, so you should have four total. Okay, so grab a second side pocket, and we're going to place these right sides together. Make sure you align that pleat seam, and I'm going to pin that top edge in place. Okay, I'm going to sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Ok, 
Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and press these fabrics wrong sides together. So before I do that, I'm going to press the seam open. Okay, now I'm going to press the fabrics wrong sides together. So I'm just going to use my fingers to roll that seam out. Okay, so I'm going to pin the fabrics so that they're wrong sides together. Okay, so now I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch around the entire outer edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and you're going to repeat the same process for the remaining two side pocket pieces, so you should have two of these units right here. Okay, now we're going to add the pearl snaps to the side pocket piece. So I like using the snap setter tool. Cam snaps are also another option, um, but this tool is really easy to use. Um, I'm using these cap snaps in antique silver finish, but um, they, they're available in other finishes as well. And these tools are available on my website as well as as well as this handle, which I think is pretty nifty. It's sort of an all-purpose handle, and it has several different sizes of screws built in. So let me just show you the, the hammer really quick. So there's a larger screwdriver, and there's two additional smaller ones as well. So these are handy for other sewing-related things, such as if you're installing twist locks. That small screwdriver would be handy for that. Okay, so let me show you how to install the snaps if you haven't put any in before. Okay, so I'm going to grab my side pocket piece and we're going to measure down from the top edge one inch and it needs to be centered and you can use your, your pleat right down the middle because that'll be the center. Okay, so I'm going to measure an inch down and make a mark. and I'm going to install the snap at that mark. So I'm going to take the snaps out of the packaging and I'm going for the female half of the snap so it's the snap part with the opening in it. And I'm using caps so I'm going to pull out one of my cap pieces. So this cap piece has prongs in it um, like that. So I need the snap to be facing outwards. So this piece is going to go in the front and the cap will go behind. So let me show you how to set that up in the tool. Okay, so first off in the tool you want to situate those prongs right on top of the marking that you made and because of the pleat it's a little bit thick but it'll be okay, it'll go through just fine. And I'm gonna set that cap right on top of the circle in the first bottom piece of the snap setter tool. Okay, so holding that <clears throat> cap in place I'm going to align the next portion of the tool which is the piece that's flat so that just goes in there like that and then finally the female half of the snap goes in and there's sort of a side that has um, what I like to think of as a flower shape that piece that flower shape goes facing up and then the last portion of the tool goes right on top and then I'm just going to use my hammer to give it a, a few quick pounds Okay, and that piece is all ready to add to the rest of the bag. Okay, now grab two of your flat pieces. We're going to flip them so that they're right sides together. And I'm going to put some wonder clips all the way around.
We're going to sew all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, except on the top edge we need to leave about a four inch opening, so I'm just going to take my fabric marker and leave myself a marking as a reminder to leave that opening. So we're going to start sewing over here, work your way around, and you're going to stop sewing when you reach the opposing mark, and again this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, go ahead and clip the corners so that just means cut diagonally, being careful not to cut into your stitching. And then we're also going to notch the curved edges. So notching just means cutting tiny little V's about halfway up the seam allowance and again you're not cutting through the stitching at all. And what notching does is when you turn the fabrics wrong sides together it helps the curves look nice and smooth and not have extra fabric bunched up in those curved corners. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this right side out and I'm going to use a turning tool to poke out the corners. Okay, so here's the turning tool that I like to use. I like it because it has sort of a, a rounded tip which is helpful for poking out the corners without damaging them. So this is a turning tool, precision tool by RNK Distributing. Okay. So remember we had that opening at the top of the flap. I'm going to turn the opening toward the inside by about a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then I'm going to give everything a good press. I'm just going to put a wonder clip on the top straight edge for now just to hold that opening closed. And then I'm just using my fingers to sort of roll out the seams. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch just the curved edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm not going to sew this straight edge at all. Okay, and I have my machine stitch lengthened to three millimeters for this top stitching. Okay, now it's time to install the male half of the magnetic snap. So the male half of the magnetic snap is the piece with the nub. Okay, so if you're using the snap setter tool, which I am, or if you're using the cam snaps or another brand of snaps, that's fine. I'm going to make a mark that's centered and up a half inch from this curved edge over here. So I'm going to take my ruler. All right, first find the center, and then I'm going to make a marking half inch up from the curved edge. So I'm going to place that right here. Okay, so again I've got my cap and I'm going to place the prongs through the fabric and then bring out that snap setter tool again. Okay, I'm going to lay that cap piece on the circle, place the second layer of the tool right down on top of it, and then the male half of the snap goes in place so that the nub is facing up. Okay, now I'm going to hammer that in place. Okay, so you're going to repeat the same process for the second flat piece. So you should have two flat pieces total and two side pocket pieces total and they all should have 
the snap portion installed. Okay, grab one of your exterior side panels. The short end should be at the top. And we're going to draw a line that's three and a half inches down from the top edge. And again, I'm using my clover chaco for that. Okay, so I'm going to take one of the flat pieces and I'm going to place it so that the nub part of the snap is facing me. I'm going to align this edge of the flap with the line that I just drew on the side panel and it needs to be centered so I'm just going to take my ruler and quickly measure and make sure that it's centered on there and it is. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew on top of the flap an eighth of an inch away from this pressed edge from one end to the other and when I do that that opening in the flap will be sealed closed. Okay, so this is what it looks like when that flap is attached. And finally, we're going to attach one of the side pocket pieces. So you want to make sure the female half of the snap is facing right side up. And we're going to pin in place so that the sides and the bottom are aligned. Okay, so I'm going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you can go ahead and snap that snap in place. Okay, so we're going to take a break in that video. We'll play the rest um, after we answer some questions live. So if you have a question for me, make sure to leave it in the comments and I'll answer as many questions as I can live. So my husband Danny is joining me on set Hello. for this uh, portion. He does all the lighting, the editing and all that stuff. So uh, we saw this comment that made me laugh. Um, Diane said, I have to set NCIS to record so I can see the video. Sarah, you should feel special because I usually... All right. Oh, you didn't finish it all? Danny cut me off. Uh, it was Thanks, a follow-up comment to it. I'll okay. put it back. Okay. Um, you should feel special because I usually don't let anything or anyone come between NCIS with Jethro, Leroy Gibbs, Mark Harmon. LOL. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. All right. Um, okay, so ask your questions. Um, I have a question for Danny. Since he's doing the filming, um, he gets to watch me sew a couple times a week at least. And so I wanted to ask you, Danny, what's something that I do really well that you've noticed when I'm sewing? And what is something that I don't do well or that annoys you? Uh, let's start with the bad so we can end <laughs> with the good. Um, sometimes Sarah gets a little ahead of herself and she is confident she remembers a pattern she wrote maybe two, three years ago. And she may skip a step. And then we got to go back and <laughs> deconstruct and refilm mm -hmm. it, which isn't so bad in my end, but time is money. And I don't like sitting around waiting for all this time, <laughs> to tell you what. So that's the worst. Uh, the good stuff is she's easy to work with. I mean, honestly, uh, if I need to take a break five times, six times an hour, uh, she's okay with it. So uh, I really like working with her. And what was the other part? No, I meant like when I'm sewing, what, what do I do? What looks to you that I'm doing a good job on? Oh, I think sewing? you have a good attention for detail. Uh, you, Really on your dot your eyes, cross your T's when you're sewn. I think you're pretty good with attention to detail. Okay, all right, thank you. You yeah. want to get to some questions or do you have anything else to say? Um, go Cubs! All right. All right, let's see. All right, Heidi wanted to know are the Core Club projects only for the club members or will they be up for all to see? We're actually posting them on YouTube 
the way my website is set up, I didn't have a way to have the Core Club subscription as well as videos. We just couldn't set it up that way. So um, this will be on YouTube on March 1st. So this is an eyeglass case. It only takes one nine inch by seven inch piece of cork, which is really awesome. I saw earlier on Yvonne asked if she could see what's in the first month of Cork Club. So I have, I brought one of these packages up from the basement and um, you get a swatch card so you can cut a little one inch square off of each piece of cork. And the funny thing is, so here's what was left after I made the eyeglass case. And it's like just enough, here's a one inch square. There's just enough to cut like a little square off and still make the eyeglass case. So I like just made it by a hair. Anyway, here's the swatch card and here's the 10 pieces of cork. So there's natural, um, rose gold, I'll just look at the screen, um, candy red, um, light green. This is Krakow in white, so it's got like a raised texture and like the color printed on it. It looks really cool in person. Um, Morocco, which is a natural cork background, and then they print this, this design on top of it. This is, is this navy? Navy? Oh, navy. Yeah. Um, this one is natural with silver, like metallic silver back, backing to it. Orange and um, rose garden, so this is sort of a new print. It's got roses, butterflies. There's a butterfly right there. So those are the first, the that's the first month of Core Club, what's in the package. It's a six month club, um, 10 pieces each month. Um, the swatch card and the video pattern for a project to make with one nine inch by seven inch piece of cork, which is the size that's in the packet. Um, Pat wanted to know, will Pelon 809 work in the divider instead of 101? Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, actually it'll work great. Um, it'll make a nice stiffness for the divider and yeah, either one or two layers would work great. Roxanne wanted to know, how do I join the Cork Club? Just go to SoSweetness.com and um, it'll be under, I'll, I'll post a link in the description after the chat for you, okay, Roxanne? Here's a question I've seen a million people had comments on. They've signed up to the newsletter but haven't received the pattern. I've seen people had comments oh, yeah. to respond is, you look at your email, once you sign up, you're gonna get another email and some people say you had to hit a confirmation on that email mm -hmm. to get the follow-up email with the pattern. So if you're, once you sign up, that's not your end step, you need to follow up one more time with the email confirming you wanna sign up to the newsletter mm -hmm. and then you'll receive the pattern. But if you did not receive it, you can always email Sarah mm -hmm. and she loves sending the patterns out. Yep. Just email her up. It's sarah at sosweetness.com and Sarah is spelled S-A-R-A, -A, no H. Okay, uh, Lynn wanted to know, can you stamp on the cork with ink? Um, I have not personally tried that. Um, I think you could. I think so. Um, if I try it, I'll post it in a future live video. Claudette wanted to know, um, hi Sarah, I bought your four pack bundle today. Will I be able to get all the patterns at once? Yes, the four pack video bundle is four videos with four PDF patterns. The videos are all brand new. And um, once you purchase it, the patterns and videos will be available to you immediately. The only exception is, and this is just the way my website's set up, if for some reason your patterns are not in your account immediately, you may have purchased other items that ship out. So um, the patterns will be available once we print the shipping label. So Danny takes care of that every morning. Um, if, I, if I happen, I've been looking, if I happen to catch people that are ordering the bundle as well as other things like cork in the same order. Um, I try to go ahead and take care of that so you don't have to wait till Danny prints the orders out. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Mary Christine wanted to know, is that mouse behind you on the, on the shelf stuffed? Oh yeah. So um, <laughs> there's an Etsy seller called Stitchify Toys and she made this. I purchased this from her Etsy shop and I bought another one for my daughter. Yours is pink, right? Yes. And um, when she sent my daughters, um, she made a little mouse for my daughter to go with her unicorn. So yes, this is a stuffed uh, toy. All right, Colleen said, uh, may have missed it, but will, will this video be available for a while? Yes, um, after the live broadcast, the Oslo Craft Bag video will be available forever on Facebook, YouTube, and on my website. So you can watch it anytime while you're working on your project. Zena wanted to know, what do you do when you get negative comments about patterns or videos? Um, there's always some sort of negative, what, what do you think as far as? Um, you know, not every pattern is for every person. <coughs> there's always like two ways to skin a cat. And if you're used to doing a way for the past 10 years, then Sarah's got a way she's used to doing it. And it's not the same way, but you can get the same result. 
some people are discouraged <laughs> by not doing it the way that they want to do it, even though you get the same result. I think that might be a, a comment sometimes I've seen. I think the main comment that I get is, and it seems like these are not people that I've heard from before, maybe they're new viewers. Um, not all of our videos are free, so we have free videos like this Oslo craft bag which we're sharing tonight, and some of the videos are paid. So a lot of the videos, like the Oslo craft bag is an hour and 40 minutes. Some of our videos are almost two hours long, and we just, this is how we support our family. So, you know, we are happy to provide as many as we can for free, but we also have some paid. Um, if it's not in your budget, then there's plenty of cool bags on my YouTube channel that are for free. Jill wanted to know how do PDF patterns work? So a PDF pattern is a digital file sent over the computer. So basically you would print out the PDF pattern or at least the templates to make the project. So as long as you print out at least the templates, you can get all your fabric and interfacing cut out. And then I know a lot of ladies like to open the pattern up on an iPad or another tablet device and sew along with it on the device. So um, the short answer is it's a digital pattern. It looks like the Facebook live feed has, has ended for a reason. So oh. I have to go take a look at that. Okay, you want to so, step over yeah. there and look at that? Should I keep, Pause should that. I hang on for a second or should I keep talking? Uh, yeah, you can talk to the YouTube people. Okay, all right, so YouTubers, um, this is just for you. So I saw a question um, from either YouTube or Facebook earlier about what the tool was that I used to install those snaps in the flaps. So this is the snap setter tool. It comes in three different pieces. Link is in the description if you're interested in purchasing this tool. But it, I think the price is $9 and it just helps you install the snap easily and all you need is a hammer. Hold on one second. While we're waiting, make sure you hit that like, comment, share button. Okay, all right. This over. Yes, if, if you enjoyed this video, um, if you're watching on Facebook, if you could hit the share button, and if you're watching on YouTube, I'd like, um, if you'd like to <laughs> hit the subscribe button and you can be notified of future videos and tutorials and of course the live videos. Okay, so what else can I show? I saw some questions coming through about the pins that I use. So here's where I store my, um, I call them pins, but they're, they're wonder clips. It's just a plastic clip that hangs onto the fabric and they actually have markings on the clip, um, quarter inch and a half inch. So uh, for quilters, it's especially handy for attaching binding, but these come in several different sizes. I think there's a mini size now, and there's also uh, extra large, which is a green one. I have some of the extra large ones, but I don't really use it much for anything except for holding um, the chip bag clothes for potato chips or pretzels or something like that. So these are my wonder clips. I saw another question coming through about the scissors I'm using in the video. So in this particular video, I was using these are Kai scissors, and the model number is 7205. It's showing live on here. It's live? All right. Danny's trying to get Ask the... the people on Facebook if there are videos. Is anybody on Facebook still able to see the video? Let me know if you can see us on Facebook so Danny can come back on and um, answer some more questions with me. Okay, yeah, I see some people on Facebook saying that it's working now. I saw Deborah said uh, it's working. Kathy said... Uh, we're back. All right, let me come back over yeah, there. Yeah, Nikki, me, I saw Nikki said it. We're back my now. Magic entrance incoming. Sorry about that. Did you fix it or uh, what happened with that, Danny? No, I didn't. It was on our and it said Facebook was still running. Okay. And I just clicked to the editor. And okay. Show it. All right. My mic, hold on. You want to take that shared thing off the screen? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Back. Sorry about our technical difficulties. <laughs> all right. Glad to have you back. Thanks for sticking around. Okay. So, um, all right. Let's see if there's anything else we can answer. Um, somebody asked what fabric that I was using for the one in the video, which is this one right here. Um, this is from Tulip, designed by Tula Pink. The fabric line is called Slow and Steady. Let me pull it back here. Um, and the lining is Tula Pink as well. All right. Um, I'm not seeing questions. There's a lot of people because they went offline. So oh, comments. okay. All right. Maybe we should, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. go back a little bit. Oh, I saw a question. Um, will this video be on YouTube to watch again? Yes, it, the recording will be available after, after we're done being live. And then we'll also post the video minus our little chit chat, just the video by itself, um, in case you don't need to hear us uh, chatting again. 
So we've had one te technical dif difficulty in the past, and I think that was uh, my fault because I had my iron plugged into the same outlet with our lights and stuff. Oh, and yeah. so uh, when the lights went out, Danny thought that uh, our power went out, and it was just the lights. And yeah. uh, but I had it was the camera as well. So I had already made a technical difficulties, uh, just like you saw the live video where it says share and stuff. I made it to technical difficulties. Please stand by. Luckily, when we did that, uh, it gave us time to, our computer was still running. So just like you saw when it said share, we put that label up there. I rebooted the camera, got the lights back working, ran downstairs real fast. Uh, and we just kept going on and it worked out okay. Thank you for the technical answer to that question. <laughs> Pamela wanted to know, Sarah, how do you come up with the names? Uh, so for the names for my patterns, they are either usually uh, song titles uh, street names, maybe minor street names from where I, around where I live, or what's the third one? Um, I'm blanking. There's a third one that I name things after. Um, oh, venues in Chicago, so like concert venues or buildings or, or places, so mostly Chicago stuff and uh, song titles. Um, there's a question, why did I name the bag the Oslo bag? Uh, I don't... <laughs> To tell you the truth, I don't remember. I think I wrote this pattern several years ago, maybe I want to say two or three years ago now. The pattern first came out in a magazine, and uh, with magazine patterns, a lot of times the rights revert back to the designer after a certain amount of time. So what that means is that, um, say for six months, you know, the pattern is only in the magazine, and after the rights revert back to me, I can do whatever I want with the pattern. So that's what happened with the Oslo Craft Bag pattern. Um, I don't remember why I called it that, but um, sounds good to me still. Beth wanted to know, I really like the tool you use to push out the corners. Where can I find information about that? Um, so this is the tool I use. It's the RNK turning tool, and it has sort of a rounded ball tip. The whole thing's metal. I'm sort of investigating um, if I can purchase this to sell on my website because I couldn't really find it a lot of places. And the story behind this tool. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. I had if that was the same tool. All around. right. So I... <laughs> I bought this tool at the end of summer last year, and we were doing some home remodeling, and Danny used it without asking to do something with the construction yep. workers with yep. it. I don't know what. Do you, remember technical... what do you remember what you were doing with it? Yes, this? but I can't divulge that on camera. Okay. Very, um, very anyway, so I went to use my tool the next time, and it was gone, and he and I was like, where's my tool? And I just thought I, I lost it. I could not remember where I put that darn thing, to be honest. So it was lost. I had to buy another one. I bought another one last week, and uh, I had a hard time finding it. So I'll look into this and see if I can get it to sell on my website. Um, but this is the R&K um, turning tool. I don't remember the precise finish or something like that. It's really useful. Um, Buster Bun wanted to know for the new video bundle if we have one of the patterns already, the physical pattern, not the PDF, can we get a PDF file for a different pattern if that makes sense? Yes, it makes sense. Just email me and I'll take care of it for you. Um, Sarah at SoSweetness.com. Sarah with no H. Any other questions coming through? Um, no. No? Okay. No, that is, uh, where do you get your inspiration for your bags? Where do I get my inspiration for my bags? Um, so earlier when I was designing bag patterns, I used to try to make the most detailed, no matter how many steps, bag pattern that I possibly could. I sort of wanted to show off to myself like, hey, look at all these you know, special things I can put in the bag. Uh, it's loaded with details. And I think now I'm in a different frame of mind where I'm like, how can I make the best looking bag, but the quickest to make, the, the least amount of steps, so that's where I'm at right now. So um, like the Renegade bag that just came out, I think that's under 30 steps. Um, just trying to make cool looking things, but not not as difficult, not as many steps, if that makes sense. Yeah. So once they have uh, use metal chopsticks for the turner for the bag. Um, oh, they have metal chopsticks? That's yeah, cool. Use metal that's really interesting. Yeah, chopsticks are good for turning too. Yeah. You know, this is like actually it. very solid. What I was using it for, which I won't divulge, why can't you say it? What? It's, it's silly. It's what I was using for, so that's what I want to say. But uh, it's no, very no, I, solid. I want to know now. I was hitting it with a hammer, and this thing is rock solid. Why were you hitting it with a hammer, though? I don't even remember. It slips my memory. But my you know, it's not the first time I've, it with a hammer? I've taken a tool from Sarah. You know, a tool, when I say tool, it's scissors. Uh, and that was like yeah. the worst thing I ever did. And it was I used a pair of scissors to cut 
I think it was a piece of paper. <laughs> no big deal, right? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Not sewing scissors. And no. she's like, yep, yeah, those are ruined. You keep those now. And I'll just get myself a new pair. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Got me nice scissors. <laughs> it's funny, when I was originally, I would be packing all the orders as well. And uh, she gave me her old scissors to cut the cork. And when I would cut it in, you know, they're usually full pieces, I'd cut in half. And I know it's like, these scissors, I'm like, having to, uh, sometimes I'd struggle cutting it, so it wouldn't be easy. And we had a lot of orders, and she came down another pair of scissors, and I grabbed the other pair because she was had the other pair on the side somewhere. So I grabbed these new ones, and it cut like cutting through butter. I'm like, why am I using these old crappy ones? It's because you used them to cut paper. Or they marker. were different ones. No, they were no, different. no. no. These why. are all metal shears. Whereas the ones you had were those black handle uh, no. ones over there. Oh, like this right here. Yes, those. Those mm -hmm. work amazing. Two thumbs right. up from Danny. Yeah. So no more cutting paper with fabric scissors. Yes. Uh, so I want to know what else can you make with cork? There's some uh, pieces. What else can you make with the seven by nine pieces of cork fabric? Is it big enough for accent pieces in your patterns? Um, I don't know. Some nine by seven is not terribly huge. I guess if you were using your pockets, it seemed like it fit a pocket maybe. for each color. So this is how big it is. The nine by seven. Maybe one of the pouches. Uh, I don't know. Maybe on this, uh, this is the cotton candy pouch. Maybe, I think you could probably get um, from the side panel, yeah, a panel out of each one, something like that. But I will be having projects on YouTube for the Cork Club for um, what to make with this. So this is just the first one, the eyeglass case. We'll have some more for you. Okay, any other questions or should we get back to the video? Uh, there's another question. Okay. Nikki wanted to know, I don't know if this went through earlier. A lot of your patterns have cut on the fold. Can you fold cork fabric? Oh, good question. All right, so let me pull, I'm just, this is not a pattern piece for anything like on the fold, but let me just show you how I would cut uh, a pattern piece out from cork fabric. So instead of folding it in half, I don't really like to do that. What I would do is, say if the straight edge is the fold edge. So I would draw the, this half on the fabric first, draw the whole entire thing, and then I would flip it so I have the mirror image, draw the other half, and then I have both halves for cutting on the fold without actually folding it in half. So that's a good question. <laughs> Funny comments coming. Uh, Dawn wanted to know, do you ever sell your finished bags? I've actually never sold a bag ever before, ever. I know that's hard to believe since I make so many. I think I just feel, I know this sounds odd since I design sewing patterns for a living, but I feel really self-conscious about my finished bags and people looking at them very thoroughly and I'm sure I have nothing to worry about. I just, I don't know. I'd rather design patterns than sell bags. <laughs> Elaine wanted to know, do you sell the foam for the bags? Um, I don't currently sell the foam interfacing. We just don't have a good, I guess we could in future. We could yeah, get bigger. It's very large envelopes. and bulky. Yeah, it is really large and bulky, but it, it's really light as well. It is. Um, we probably could sell it. We'll look into that. I know not, not every area has access to good interfacings. Yolanda wanted to know, have you ever created a diaper bag? I do have a pattern in my shop called the Aragon bag, and I designed that specifically to be a diaper bag. So um, check out the Aragon bag. Just go to SoSweetness.com and hit the... There's a graphic for sewing patterns. Just hit that in the Aragon bag. Since it's alphabetical, it should be near the top. All right. All right. Is that it? Uh, I don't see any other comments. Okay. All right. So we're going to play the rest of the video. Um, how much more in the video I think there is? Maybe about 50 more minutes in the video. Um, you're welcome to watch till the end. Um, we're just going to cut it after the video tonight because... Uh, no more questions at the end this time because I have to take my kids up to bed. I think da I'm going to make Danny stay down here and babysit the rest of the video. But I hope you enjoy the rest of the Oslo Craft Bag video. If you want to find the pattern, check the description. There's a link to sign up for oh, my newsletter. On. Oh, is there no? My favorite part. What happened? Uh. Oh. There's bag ladies and bag guys. I know. I, <laughs> there's. I think Kevin was in the comments. You know, I, I saw you, man. Kevin. I think his name was Kevin. All right. So, so if you're a bag lady, let me know in the comments I'll, and be proud I'm gonna about it. I'm going to fix that graphic. We'll throw a guy in there somewhere. Bag lady slash guy. What do you guys think? Should we change it? No, we need Add something new to it? Bag dude. Bag dude. That sounds let pretty cool, actually. Let me know cool, in the actually. comments if you're a bag lady and be wow, proud about it. pretty yeah. good. High five. Good job. All right. Okay. All right. Go back so, to the video. All right. We're going to play the rest of the video. Enjoy and have a good night. And then repeat this process so that you have 
the second flap and the side pocket attached to the remaining um, exterior side panel. So you should have two of those. Okay, go ahead and take out one front pocket binding piece, and this is just a piece of the solid fabric with no interfacing on it. And we're going to press one long edge toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to take my fabric marker and draw a line that's a quarter of an inch up from the bottom long edge, and I'm going to press that toward the wrong side. Okay, and you're going to repeat this process for the other two binding pieces, so you should have a total of three. Okay, go ahead and take out one front pocket piece, it looks like this, and then grab your binding. So I'm going to have the pressed under edge of the binding against the right side of the fabric, and the raw edges will be aligned. I'm going to put a few wonder clips to hold this in place. And we're going to sew the entire outer edge of the binding using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, so all the way around. Okay, and I have my stitch length set back down to two and a half millimeters. And I'm going to trim any overhang of the binding from the wrong side of that front pocket. And you'll repeat this process to attach the remaining two binding strips to two more front pocket pieces. So you should have a total of three that look just like this. Okay, now go ahead and take out your front pocket paper pattern piece, and I went ahead and cut the dart out. So I'm going to flip to the wrong side of that front pocket piece, and I'm going to mark the dart on both halves of the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to pinch those corners so that the fabrics are right sides together. And you want to make sure, um, this is called the dart leg, you want to make sure those are aligned on both sides. Okay, and I'm going to put a wonder clip to hold that in place. And same thing on the other side. Okay, we're going to sew directly on top of the line from here to here, and same thing on the other end. Okay, so this is what it should look like after it's been sewn. I'm going to trim both of these down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and you don't have to measure it, just eyeball it, it's fine. Okay, so you're going to repeat this same process for sewing the darts for the three pieces with the binding, and then you should also have three pieces with no binding. So same thing, sew the darts in those pieces as well. Okay, so grab one piece with the, the binding on the top and one piece without it, and we're going to place those right sides together. I'm going to pin all the way around the outer edge, and when you get to pinning the darts, make sure you try your best to align the seams of the darts. I'm also going to take my fabric marker and I'm going to draw two lines. We need to leave an opening on this side edge that's about three inches, so I'm going to draw markings um, where I'm going to leave that opening. You want to avoid the dart and you want to give yourself a little bit of room for that top corner. Okay, so I'm going to push my darts so that one is toward um, the bottom and one's toward the top so that it's not too bulky where those dart seams are. Okay, we're going to sew this using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and don't forget to leave that opening.
I'm going to clip the corners, so I'm just going to cut diagonally across these two corners over here. And wherever there's a curve, I'm going to cut little V's. Okay, now I'm going to turn this right side facing out and press. And I'm going to use my turning tool to poke out those top corners. Okay, so when I press this, I'm also going to press that opening toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to put a wonder clip on that opening for now. Okay, I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters and I'm going to top stitch the top edge only an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Okay, and you're going to repeat this same process so that you have three of the front pocket pieces total. Okay, now go, go ahead and pull out one of your exterior main panels and you'll need either a fabric marker or a chalk and your ruler. So in step number 34 of the pattern, there's an illustration for a bunch of markings that we're going to do for placement of those front pocket pieces. So to start, we're going to measure and draw a line, a horizontal line that's one inch up from the bottom edge. Okay, so the next horizontal line is going to be three and one quarter of an inch down from the top edge. Okay, now we're going to draw four vertical lines. So the first one is going to be three quarters of an inch over from the left hand side. Okay, the second line is going to be five and one quarters of an inch over, three quarters of an inch over from the right hand side. And then finally, five and one quarters of an inch over from the right hand side. I'm going to have a bit of a lift just because it needs to fit in between the margin. We're going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters and we'll sew, sew and add one of these front pocket pieces at a time. Okay, now we're going to add a second front pocket. Again, we're going to use those markings that we made as sort of a margin for this piece to fit in. And again, I'm going to use some of my pins to hold it in place.
And I'm making sure especially to get these bindings so that they're aligned. Okay, so just as before, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so this is what it should look like when all three of those front pocket pieces are attached to the exterior main panel. Okay, so now we're going to make the, the back pocket. So grab both of your back pocket pieces and place them right sides together. I'm going to pin along the top edge. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to press the seam open. Okay, and then go ahead and press those fabrics wrong sides together. Okay, we're going to top stitch this pressed edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Grab your remaining exterior main panel and we're going to stick that completed back pocket right on top. So the sides and the bottom are going to be aligned. I'm going to use some wonder clips to hold that into place. And we're going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now go ahead and put this to the side for now. Okay, now we're going to move on to making the handles and the tabs. So I have two different methods. If you're using quilting cotton, I'll show you how to do that. And then I'll also show you how to make the handles if you want to make them from cork, leather, or vinyl. So let's start with the quilting cotton. Flip to the wrong side of the fabric. And we're going to press the fabric's wrong sides together in half. Okay, now go ahead and open the fabric back out and we're going to press this bottom edge so that it hits the center crease. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the top edge. We'll press this top edge down toward the center crease. Okay, 
Okay, go ahead and refold those fabrics. And then both of the long edges should be toward the inside. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch both of the long edges an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. I'm going to take that handle piece and I'm going to draw a line with my chalk that is a half inch in from the short raw edge. And then a second line that's also in from the raw edge, but it's going to be one and a half inches this time. Okay, I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to press both of these markings toward the wrong side by the lines that I drew. I'm just going to put a wonder clip on, on the, this end for now, and I'm going to repeat the same process for the opposite end. Okay, again, a half inch and one and a half inch, and pressing toward the wrong side. Okay, and you'll repeat this process for the second handle piece if you're making a handle with quilting cotton or another fabric that frays. So you should have two handles total. Okay, now go ahead and take out your two tab pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. Okay, we're going to sew both of the long edges and one short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, make sure you turn down your stitch length to your regular and mine's two and a half millimeters. Okay, now I'm going to clip these two corners and then I'm going to turn this right side out and press. So I'm actually going to grab my fast turn turning tool, which looks like this. It's a tube with this piece that comes out with a wire. It's got a corkscrew on one end. Let me show it above this um, white interfacing so you can see. The corkscrew is what pulls the fabric out through the tube. So I'm going to stick the tube in the opening first. And then I'm going to insert the cork corkscrew in the opening. Okay, I'm going to twist it till that corkscrew comes out the other end and then that corkscrew will pull that fabric back through the tube. Okay, to release the corkscrew all you have to do is twist it a little bit until the corkscrew comes out. 
Okay, so I'm going to use my turning tool to poke out the corners. And then I'm going to give this a ta tab a good press on both sides. Okay, you're going to repeat this same process with all of your tab pieces in pairs, and then you should have for each of these completed tab pieces. Okay, if you're using cork or leather or vinyl for your handles, the assembly is going to be slightly different. So I've got a piece of cork fabric right here that I've cut out, and I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to draw a line that's right down the middle of the fabric, so it's going to be one inch up from the long edge. Okay. So I'm going to do some finger pressing toward that center line. So I'm going to, for that I'm going to use Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. It's a double sided tape and it's a quarter of an inch wide. So the first side has the paper layer on it right here and then underneath is the first sticky side. So I'm going to stick that down maybe about an eighth of an inch away from the line on the top and the bottom. And just use your fingers to give it a good press. You can also use a washable glue stick. So I'm going to stick that down on the other side of the line as well. Okay, and then just take your fingernail and peel back a corner of the Wash Away Wonder Tape and it should reveal the second side of the adhesive. Okay, so now I'm going to take the bottom long edge and bring it up toward that line that I made. And I'm also going to stick some Wonder Clips on there just to hold it in place. and then bring that top long edge in toward the center line as well. Okay, so if you're sewing with a vinyl or a leather, you'll want to use either a Teflon foot or a walking foot. A lot of times, depending on the climate, um, with cork fabric, you can just use your regular sewing machine foot. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch away from this raw edge that's showing on either side, so this edge and this edge. And then I'm also going to top stitch both of the long edges an eighth of an inch away from the pressed edge as well. Okay, for this top stitching, I'm lengthening my stitch length to three millimeters.
okay, take one of the handle pieces and you're going to draw a line that's two and a quarter inch away from the short end. And we're going to draw another one that's also two and a quarter of, a, of an inch away from the line. Okay, so instead of making the individual tab pieces, we're just cutting them off from the finished handle. So from the first tab piece, I cut, sorry, from the first handle, I cut two tab pieces, and you'll repeat that for the second handle. So each handle will have two tab pieces cut from it. Okay, now take the handle piece, and we're going to draw a line that's one inch away from each short end. Okay, so instead of pressing with the iron, we're just going to finger press toward the wrong side at that line. And I'm just going to slide a wonder clip on there. And then same thing with the other side. Okay, so go ahead and set that handle to the side for now. Okay, now take out your tab pieces, and this process going forward will be the same if you've made a leather tab or cork, or if you've made one from quilting cotton. So you're going to draw a line that's one inch down from the top edge and just draw a horizontal line. And then the same thing for the quilting cotton if that's what you use. Okay, so now you want to take out your metal rectangles and these should be one inch wide. And you'll just slide the rectangle and bend it down at the line that you made. And go ahead and put some wonder clips on there to hold that in place. Okay, same process for the tab made with quilting cotton. You'll place the metal rectangle at that one inch line and then fold the fabric in half. Okay, so my bag has the quilting cotton tab, so I'm going to put um, this tab made with the cork fabric to the side. Going forward, I'm just going to continue on with the quilting cotton tabs, but like I said, the process for stitching them in place will be the same. Okay, so go ahead and pull out one of your exterior main panels. We're going to take the ruler and either a chalk or fabric marker, and we're going to draw a line that's one inch down from this top edge. Okay, I'm also going to draw two vertical lines. Each vertical line will be three inches in from each side edge. Okay, so go ahead and take out two of the tab pieces, and each tab piece is going to be placed to the inside of the margin that you drew, and this top folded edge of the tab is going to nestle at that one inch line, and it'll be in from the side by three inches. So each tab piece is going to be placed over here. We're going to sew about a quarter of an inch away from the hardware. We're going to just sew straight across, and we're also going to sew an eighth of an inch away from um, the bottom edge of the tab. So right here and right here we're going to be stitching and you're not going to be sewing over this back pocket piece at all. Okay, so this is what that completed exterior main panel looks like, and you'll repeat the same process for the remaining exterior main panel. Okay, so now it's time to start assembling the body of the exterior. So we'll start with one of the exterior main panels, it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to add one of the exterior side panels. So we'll place those right sides together, and I'm going to pin that side edge. And just like we did for the lining, we're going to sew using a half inch seam allowance, except we're going to stop a half inch away from this bottom edge over here. So I'm going to take my fabric marker and I'm going to draw a line that's a half inch up from this bottom edge. So I'm going to start sewing up here, half inch seam allowance, and stop sewing when I reach the line. Okay, make sure you change your stitch length back to your usual, and mine's two and a half millimeters. Okay, 
we're going to press this seam open. Okay, and then go ahead and add the second exterior side panel on the other edge of the exterior main panel. So again, I'm going to flip those so that they're right sides together and pin. Okay, again, I'm going to draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. And we're going to sew using a half inch seam allowance and we're going to stop sewing when we reach the line. And one little note, if you're having trouble sewing as we add through all these extra layers, feel free to swap out for your walking foot on your sewing machine. Okay, let's press that seam open again. And now we're going to add that last exterior main panel. So we'll start by adding it to this end. And you want to just make sure you're adding it so your pockets are not upside down. So this is the correct way. Both of the tabs should be near the top of the bag. So I'm going to flip so it's right sides together. Again, we're going to pin the side edges. And same as before, we're going to sew this using a half inch seam allowance and I'm going to draw my line that's a half inch away from the bottom and that's where we're going to stop sewing. Okay, press that seam open. Okay, we're going to sew the, the last edge of the exterior main panel to the opposing um, side panel. So again, those are going to be right sides together. Okay, again, half inch seam allowance and we're going to stop at that line, which will be a half inch above the bottom edge. Okay, press that last seam open. Okay, now we're going to add the exterior bottom panel. So again, make sure the tabs are near the top of the bag. So the top of the bag is right over here. We're going to be at attaching the bottom panel to the bottom of the bag. Okay, so here's the exterior bottom panel. I'm going to flip it so that the fabrics are right sides together. And we're going to pin in a similar manner to what we did with the lining. So again, we're going to match up the corners. So the reason we left this bottom half edge open is so we could access this corner right here. And we're going to pin that to the exterior bottom. Okay, and then just work your way around the bag. We're going to pin all four edges. Same thing, line up the, the corners first. Okay, so again, same thing with the lining. We're going to be using a half inch seam allowance and we're only going to sew one edge at a time. So we're going to start sewing from over here where we can see the stitching line. We're going to start sewing here and then we're going to stop sewing when we reach the stitching line on this end. Of course, make sure you backstitch. 
break the stitching, take it off the machine, and then we'll move around to sew this edge from the stitching line to the stitching line, and so on, all four edges. Okay, go ahead and trim down all the seams to approximately a quarter of an inch, so you'll be trimming down the seams in half. Okay, so now we're going to turn the exterior right side facing out. And just use your fingers to kind of poke out the bottom corners of the bag. Okay, so now I'm going to place the lining inside the exterior. So the lining is going to stay wrong side facing out and it's just going to go right inside. Okay, so I'm going to align the seams and I'll pin those four seams first. Fabrics are going to go wrong sides together and the top raw edge is going to be aligned. and then go ahead and pin the rest of the way. Okay, so one little note. Um, I wrote it as a, a notation in the pattern. If you would like to, you can use um, a permanent fabric spray, and I listed um, the Thermoweb Thermo Web Spray and Bond Fusible Adhesive as one of those options. But you could go ahead and spray some on the wrong side of the exterior, and then go ahead and 
stick your lining to the exterior wrong sides together. So that, that's just an option, completely optional. I'm going to skip the spray for mine and I'm just going to sew these uh, along the top edge instead. Okay, so either option's fine to go with. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this top edge wrong sides together using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, if you're using that spray adhesive, you'll want to attach that adhesive before you stitch the top edge. Okay, go ahead and grab your top binding piece and we're going to place it right sides together so that the short ends meet. We're going to sew the short ends using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, now go ahead and press that seam open and we're going to attach this top binding to the top edge of the bag. So we're going to start pinning it to the lining side. So I'm going to finger press this binding so that it's wrong sides together in half, so just like this. And I'll start with the seam against the back of the bag. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one, one wonder clip over here. And let me tilt it a little sideways so you can see what I'm doing. So we're pinning this to the lining. Okay, I'm just going to work my way all the way around, making sure to finger press the fabrics wrong sides together as I go. Okay, so we're going to sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around.
Okay, now go ahead and flip that binding and wrap it around to the exterior side. So let me show you how, how that'll look. Just like that. So you're going to cover the stitching line from when we attach the binding on the opposite side. Okay, so I'm going to work my way all the way around. Okay, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and you're going to sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric all the way around and that will secure the binding. Okay, go ahead and lengthen your stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. Okay, so last thing is to add the handle. So you should already have either if you're making the quilting cotton or with leather or cork handles, you should have the ends of the handles held back with wonder clips and pressed if you are using the, the quilting cotton. So we're just going to add the handles to each either side of the purse hardware. So I'm just going to take the clips off for just a second. And the hardware is going to nestle in that second crease right over there. And I'm going to put the wonder clips back on. And then, of course, make sure that the strap is not twisted before you attach the other end. Okay, so we're going to be sewing about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the hardware. And then we'll sew a second line of stitching just so we can cover this pressed end of the end of the handle. Okay, add the second handle in the same way that you did with the first. Okay, so now it's time to give the bag a good press. 
you want to make sure you press all of the sides and especially these top corners over here. You can sort of shape it with your fingers and give the corners a press so it creates sort of a boxy shape. And then just work your way around the bag pressing all of the top corners and also pressing the sides. So I like to sort of flatten the corners out, the side edges with my fingers and then just press it down with the iron. So finish pressing your bag and then you're all finished. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished bag. Be sure to join my Facebook group and post a photo of your finished project there. If you liked this project and would like to see more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, if I can do it, so can you. Danny, yeah. how long do you leave this up on the screen? <laughs>